so I'm Mike uh, Rappaport. I work uh, for IBM Research, uh, and uh, my one of my areas of interest is uh, boot time memory management. I maintain MemBlock, uh, which is mostly boot time allocator and memory management uh, before the main uh, page allocator starts. And uh, in the course of my work, I've uh, seen a lot of things uh, that probably could be done better uh, with the respect of uh, interaction between architectures and uh, the memory, low boot time memory management code. So uh, to start with, uh, there are uh, a lot of diversity in the, in the interaction between uh, the memory management uh, and the architecture and how the architectures define uh, their uh, and they pass uh, the information about their memory configuration to the generic uh, virtual memory management layers. Now, uh, this uh, is actual command from uh, uh, x86 uh, setup code uh, that has like a, a nearly 10 max uh, PFN uh, with prefix and suffixes is uh, so that uh, one of the developers uh, uh, took uh, uh, took a second to know that explicitly uh, and uh, this is not much different on the other architectures and uh, this diversity and the lack of a coherent uh, uh, representation of the physical memory across the kernel uh, leads sometimes to some unexpected uh, uh, effects. Uh, there are subtle bugs uh, that uh, we uh, need to trace uh, here and there. Uh, there are uh, difficulties in the memory hot plug, memory hot remove, uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, for the most part, uh, memory, physical memory is represented by the memory map struct page uh, and uh, it works uh, really good for cases when the memory is flat, when there is no memory hot plug and when there is no chi exec that architecture supports. So uh, these architectures that actually fall into this category and they probably these are not most exciting examples of what you of of the machines you can run Linux on. And now, whenever we add some complexity and whenever the things became more interesting, there are various effects that may be caused by things that by 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 the things. My lack of uh, consistency between, uh, for example, memory map and the actual uh, mem physical memory layout. For instance, uh, for systems that use sparse mem, uh, memory map can uh, cover holes in the physical memory and uh, there will be indeed struct page for these holes, but there won't be a memory. And uh, there is a long lasting confusion, especially in the ARM, uh, in the ARM code that uh, PFN valid uh, actually means that there is memory, although it, uh, it means only that there is a memory. And next, uh, there are systems, uh, there are architectures that uh, use uh, that free parts of their memory map to save uh, memory, which is precious for them, uh, and uh, to reduce overhead cost, memory overhead cost by the memory map. Uh, and uh, these cases uh, also need to know uh, how to properly, uh, and uh, I'll talk about, the, about them a bit later. KXEC uh, adds uh, yet another level of uh, complexity uh, and uh, memory hot, uh, hot plug, hot unplug is probably the most uh, complex case for the, uh, for the lack of a coherent representation of the physical memory in the kernel. Oh, the systems that uh, decide to free parts of their memory map uh, need to define a custom APFN valid implementation because uh, uh, 
with the generic PFN valid implementation, just it takes uh, the PFN, it subtracts uh, the base PFN, and then uh, you can access a struct page, and then you can dereference struct page, and then you can get null pointer, just because the uh, memory is not there uh, because it was freed in the init time. So uh, there are a few of uh, the architectures uh, that do it. Uh, it's ARC, MX68K, and uh, ARM. Uh, and uh, Arc simply Arc may has up to two memory banks, so it simply uses uh, four variables uh, to check if uh, a PFN belongs to the uh, area actually covered by the physical memory. Uh, if it is, on the, then we know for sure there is a memory map, and then PFN is valid. Uh, M M68K has a neat trick. They have a virtually contiguous mapping of the physical memory, regardless of the holes in the physical memory. So uh, for them, uh, PFN valid is alias to virtual address valid, which, is, which means it's uh, present in their direct memory. And the ARM uh, relies on memblock, and the ARM is one of the architectures that keep memblock after the boot. Is so uh, uh, PFN valid when there is a memblock uh, registered uh, memory, uh, and it worked really nice for older ARM systems with one or two memory banks. But when uh, uh, things become more complex with the addition of a CPI to ARM32. Uh, the each PFN valid actually uh, it takes much longer times it, it should that it probably should and uh, I can say I have a good solution for this probably reconsider the trade-off between uh, uh, between uh, memory savings and uh, the efficiency of uh, PFN valid now uh, there is k exec that uh, relies on uh, resource tree to find the memory where the bits of newly executed code will and data will be put. And uh, for that, it uses system RAM a subtree in the IOMEM resource tree. Uh, I'm not sure it was a, a really good design choice, but uh, well, I wasn't around back then. Uh, I don't know, maybe there were no better alternatives. And, and but the problems it created is that systems that systems other than x86 uh, have really different representation of the physical memory in, in their in their firmware and in, in how they treat physical memory. So uh, it may happen that a uh, system RAM uh, can actually point to firmware blobs. That would uh, that are never exposed the system RAM in x86, and these uh, firmware blobs uh, can get overwritten by uh, executing kexec. Uh, there is also uh, a lot of duplicated uh, code in uh, Arch uh, that registers uh, memory system RAM memory resources, and then reserves kernel resources, and then reserves. Uh, different resources on every architecture, depending uh, on what bugs they hit during the impl their implementation of KXEC. Uh, for instance, ARM64 uh, has very special treatment for their no map uh, regions, and uh, RISC V has, I think, the most complex function that registers uh, the system RAM resources. Uh, and uh, this whole pile of code requires maintenance uh, and uh, the resource tree and the whatever firmware representation there is in the Arch code uh, requires uh, constant thinking with one or another. So uh, any change, for instance, uh, addition of a CPI to RISC-V would require yet another pass through uh, update of uh, IOMEM resources. And uh, who knows uh, who, what bugs uh, will hit uh, there as uh, we go. And the uh, memory hot plug uh, has its own way to represent the same physical memory. 
uh, originally uh, it was uh, hidden behind uh, it was uh, hanged uh, I can, I'd say from uh, devices uh, that uh, visible to CFS and uh, there were uh, structures uh, there, there are structures called memory blocks uh, each memory block represent a section a block of uh, memories that can be removed or or plugged uh, on the fly uh, the each memory block has its corresponding device node so that it will be accessible via sys uh, devices system and uh, and uh, user can have some level of control for memory hot plug and hot remove uh, via CFS. Uh, at some point, the initialization of all the memory blocks at hot at the cold plug time became really expensive at on the systems with uh, terabytes of memory and uh, on top of the uh, of the CFS entries, there is a uh, what uh, what's called the uh, local cache of uh, memory blocks is 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 an X-ray of uh, all memory blocks in the system. Now, whenever there is a, an actual update for the physical memory, uh, uh, such that such as a uh, plug on plug, a uh, memory hot plug code needs to update multiple data structures. Uh, it has to create the memory block and the device node and CFS uh, entries for the new uh, for the new memory bank, or on the contrary, it has to remove them when the memory bank is removed. Uh, then uh, it should uh, register IO memory source under the system RAM hierarchy, sub hierarchy. And for architectures that keep mem block after boot, like ARM64 and the PowerPC, uh, they also need to add the mem block entry because their PFN valid or some other OK exec code relies on mem block rather than other representations of the physical mem. So, what we have at the moment, uh, we have uh, to kind of recap, uh, we have several representations of the physical memory, like uh, a subtree in IOMEM uh, resource. Uh, we have mem block for several architectures. We have mem memory blocks in the driver's base memory for memory hot plug hot remove. And on top of that, we have a specific data rep representing a physical memory layout. A, for instance, a low PFN, max PFN on ARC. We have a MXT6K memory array or Parisk P memory engines, which are very similar to MEM block, but for historical reasons, they remain untouched as is, so they are still there. And uh, we have uh, more complex beasts like X86, E820, X86, Numa Mem Info, and we have PowerPC, uh, DR Mem, uh, logical memory blocks, which uh, kind of duplicates mem blocks uh, in a way. Uh, so uh, all of these uh, essentially uh, duplicate each other in that way, or in, in one of the ways. Now, what we are trying to, what we, what we, what we have, and, and I'm going to try to explain my my thoughts about uh, having a more coherent model. Uh, so, what we have uh, is, let's start with the what is physical memory. Uh, physical memory uh, in most systems is a collection of continuous memory banks. Uh, now, uh, there is a. An exception of uh, x86 first megabyte where things gone uh, a bit different because uh, uh, because of their history and uh, nobody would ever need six, more than 640 kilobytes of memory. But uh, uh, for the general case, uh, there are DIMMs or soldered memory or whatever. And I doubt hardware designers would uh, try to uh, complicate these things uh, instead of having a, a 
the banks that found the fixed unrestricted address range uh, doing some weird things with additional uh, costs of hardware to do it differently. So there are DIMMs or soldered memory or whatever, there are memory banks that uh, each bank's, uh, bank has a, 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 a fixed uh, physical address range. It has a start address, it has size, uh, and uh, in the NUMA systems, a bank belongs to a NUMA node. Uh, and uh, on systems that support memory hot plug, uh, the a bank can be removed or inserted. There, there could be an empty slot uh, that is not populated at boot, but it then can be populated uh, during system runtime. Uh, Ted, would you like me to answer questions as I see them, or we postpone everything to the end? Uh, it's totally up to you which you prefer. Um, if you think you uh, would like to answer questions as you go, that's great. If you think you're running out of time, you can feel free to defer questions towards the end. I think I'll defer questions for the end, unless something jumps with a raised hand and they want to ask immediately. Thanks. So uh, back to the uh, back to the things uh, we have a collection of to recap we have collection of continuous memory banks every bank has a physical address it has its size uh, it might have uh, a, a particular number node it belongs to it might be a uh, plugged on plugged uh, at system runtime uh, then uh, what kernel says is actually not real physical layout, but it's what firmware told, it tells him, that tells it. So uh, all the all the architectures have a, a, a mechanism to communicate with firmware. What are the physical memory extents? Uh, most most of the time, it boils down to some sort of defining physical memory address ranges. Uh, Firmware also tells uh, what ranges are already used by it and uh, will, sh shouldn't be touched by the kernel. Uh, on some architectures, there is also a requirement uh, that uh, some areas won't be even part of the kernel page tables because it may cause uh, a, a CPU to go nuts about aliased mappings of the same uh, memory. Uh, there could be memories that it's unusable because of uh, hardware errors and so on. And uh, all this information gets into the kernel with the uh, either device tree or ACPI or E820, EFI, ECPI, or whatever other bootloader mechanism there for a particular architectures. Now, uh, one interesting thing is that uh, there could be two entirely different ways of defining what memory is usable and what memory is not usable. Uh, x86 and uh, E820 define a usable memory and unusable memory, memory in the way that uh, the ranges do not intersect uh, one with another, which means uh, x86 uh, has a notion of usable memory that comes as a system round type and all the other types that can be actually used by kernel uh, have different types defined by uh, EFI, CPI, whatever standard you name, but these reserved ranges uh, never intersect with the system memory ranges. Uh, on the other side, there is device tree and the other bootloader mechanisms that just say, okay, here I have memory and here I have a reserved memory that I've cut off that memory I've given you, or maybe I even reserved memory that doesn't exist at all, but I still want it reserved because there are configurations which has this memory populated or there may be hot block and that memory would be, would be populated at some later point. Uh, this uh, this point created a lot of uh, confusion in uh, how memlock is integrated in x86 in the first place, and uh, I still with TLC uh, 
consequences of that uh, confusion. So uh, my thoughts about how we would see, how we would model the physical memory uh, is, pretty much cons is pretty much what we have in that way or another in either resource tree or mem block or memory blocks of the memory hot plug. Uh, we have a representation of memory bank uh, that has an address range. It has some attributes like hot pluggable uh, that maybe it cannot be mapped into the a kernel address space it may be online offline in some particular mode or it could have a NUMA node assignment in the systems that support it and for memory code plug then we we need a struct device to have uh, to, to have a user ability to see the memory bank in ccfs and I don't think it will go uh, go away soon uh, because uh, we don't break user space. Uh, except the memory bank, which kind of abstracts uh, the physical memory bank, we need the, some representation of the memory that already busy by the time kernel starts. It also has address range. It also has some attributes like uh, a can it be mapped or not? Uh, I'm not sure it's uh, required here, but probably. Uh, was it uh, reserved by firmware? Was it unusable because of hardware errors? Or it was allocated uh, during early boot uh, by uh, some, uh, by for instance, memblock. And it also has, I uh, may have an uh, attribute, it also should have attributes uh, that uh, directly directly uh, correspond to what uh, the architecture see, like uh, ACPI types, uh, EFI types, uh, and uh, depending on other architectures, there may be other things uh, that the architecture would like to put it. Uh, so uh, shortly, it would be some kind of architecture flux in that structure. Uh, I don't know, maybe it should also have a NUMA node assignment, but I'm not sure about it. And uh, to wrap it uh, all, uh, we need some uh, collection that glues a memory bank, a collection data structure that glues memory bank and reserve memory representations. And uh, it could be a tree, it could be X-ray, it could be just resizable array like mem block. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we can choose I think there are three possible ways to move forward with this uh, representation. One is to start a completely new module, uh, which doesn't look like a really bright idea to me. Uh, so we'll add the fourth uh, thing to fourth point of uh, synchronization to what we already have. And uh, it would be too revolutionary rather than evolutionary. It's not way that we do things usually. So, uh, which leaves us with two main candidates uh, for the implementation. Uh, one is the resource tree uh, and system RAM uh, sub hierarchy in it. And another one is a man block that already has, uh, uh, that both of them uh, somehow represent uh, physical memory. Uh, and uh, both of them have very similar structures like uh, start and blocks and uh, flags and so on. And obviously, because I'm uh, working on memblock, I tend to like memblock more. But, but anyway, uh, I think uh, these are more uh, more of objective uh, reasons why resource tree is not very suitable for representing a physical memory. Uh, first, uh, uh, system RAM uh, is a subtree of uh, it's a sub sub subtree sub of file mem resource, uh, and uh, I don't know. It makes me shiver. Uh, uh, the bits, the flags in the resource struct resource uh, do not really uh, correspond to what physical memory needs. They more of what. IO and the uh, memory mapped IO need. Uh, 
the structed resource is not supported on all architectures in the sense that not all architectures register a system RAM resource because they don't have KZX support, so they never had a need to system for system RAM resource. Uh, whenever you'd like to do some query about whether an address is in physical memory, whether it's busy or free, uh, the traversal would also include the whole bunch of uh, actual I/O memory, uh, which can be quite a lot on the systems with lots of uh, devices. And I think that uh, having uh, exactly one owner of a particular range is a really strict uh, is really strict requirement for the memory physical memory representation. Now, uh, why I think MemBlock is the is the better option. Uh, so first of all, it's supported by all architectures. Uh, all everything uses MemBlock as the a uh, boot time representation before for initialization of the uh, of the page allocator. Uh, MemBlock has ability to add memory and uh, reserve memory from the very from time zero from the very beginning of the kernel because it's static array that's uh, always uh, available uh, well, up, up to some reasonable limits. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, uh, ability mm -hmm. even to define a uh, amount of per architecture mm -hmm. reservations at the boot time. Uh, since it's an ordered array, it has a comparable performance with the tree, resource tree. Uh, and the MemBlock region already has most of the necessary bits. Uh, uh, so they, there are only small additions that requires to require to MemBlock in data structures and flags to make it more complete a, a model of the physical memory. And there are still uh, some issues that uh, need to be addressed. Uh, for instance, member has no locking because most of the time it runs uh, before threading is available. So there is no concurrency whenever member is, uh, is used. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have theoretical arrays in memory hot plug on ARM or on PowerPC that will add, uh, add two banks simultaneously and uh, will require simultaneous mem block add, and it may, that may go wrong. And now uh, there is an issue that mem block remove will may fail, and uh, there are almost no failure uh, checking on the memory hot hot unplugging path. And there is also perception that memblock is an allocator that uh, replaced boot mem. And I even thought about sending a patch that uh, will rename a memblock allocator functions back to boot mem allocator functions, but uh, probably it's too much. Uh, it would be too much and uh, well, maybe next 1st of April I'll do it. And there is a uh, some uh, there are some issues in how x86 uses memblock and i'm trying slowly to move it i'm trying to move slowly to solve them but it will take some time at least so uh, the first thing i wanted to do is to uh, move the registration of system ram uh, resources to memblock for all architectures that actually traverse memblock data structures and, uh, and use them to register a uh, system uh, ram resources it didn't well it didn't went too well but uh, i'm hoping i'll uh, uh, to resend this with all the feedback addressed I think I'm thinking of adding uh, flags for to differentiate between reserved regions, so uh, it will be known what exactly 
reserved, made the reservation, was it kernel firmware and so on. And uh, uh, I'm working on uh, creating a clearer boundary between the memory representation and the low level APIs like main block add, main block remove to the allocator part that uh, uh, actually does low uh, boot time memory allocations. Uh, the next steps I, I, I was thinking of are uh, making main block remove a resilient AMO, making my block remove essentially void that so that it won't fail. Uh, to be honest, I don't know yet how exactly am I going to do this, uh, but uh, it will be done at some point, I think. Uh, there are still some inconsistencies between how architectures treat uh, different pieces of main block and the generic code does. Uh, and yeah, there is also uh, there is also a need to remove uh, architecture specific data and code that represents exactly the same thing things uh, probably in a different way. I'm not sure it's even possible, but uh, at least uh, some of the data may be uh, may be created recreated from Memblock or Memblock may be recreated from that data uh, depending on the state. Uh, the, but the major point, uh, the, the whole bits here must be in sync and uh, at the moment they are not necessarily up. And uh, sometime in the far future, probably we'll have the only representation of the physical memories that will be used to uh, as a backend store for current uh, API like uh, CSFS and the uh, Proc IOMM. And uh, we could enable uh, Arch Keep MAM block on architectures that support memory hot plug and uh, remove the need for updating the memory state from the memory hot plug but rather do it one time with, uh, for instance, memblock add and uh, the entire uh, surrounding uh, representations will be updated automatically. So uh, now it, it's time for a bit of discussion. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, so I'll maybe try to address the questions first. So first question from Shalene. Quick question, uh, should I read them? Good, quick question, probably orthogonal. How does hot plan re really work? One needs a physically continuous allocation of struct page for that given physical address. Uh, yes. Uh, hot plug, uh, there is a document, I think David uh, Hildebrand written a while ago uh, that covers how hot plug works from the user perspective. I can't say I'm really familiar with the internal workings, but uh, whenever uh, whenever there is a, a bank inserted and uh, the, there is a, for instance, on X86, an SCPI event uh, that causes uh, uh, creation of uh, the memory map and then aligning of that uh, memory, uh, I'm not sure about particular uh, order. So please uh, take a look at memory hot plug documentation in the documentation. Liam, a good some indication that VM memory isn't actually real worth having. Would we want to be treated differently in some way? Hey, Liam, I'm sorry, I can't say I understand the question. If you don't mind to turn on the audio. Uh, Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, so I was looking, I was thinking like you're, you're showing how you were going to represent the memory and I was wondering if uh, VMs uh, if if VMs indicate that they are VMs in the memory blocks, then we would know that you know it, it could be hot plugged or it could be uh, maybe uh, transferred to another machine or migrated or something. And I was wondering if that would be worth having or or not. Maybe. Uh, well, uh, at the moment we have all the kinds of ballooning, but they do not really remove uh, physical memory. The time memory is the closest thing. It's it's only the dust hot plug hot unplug. So whenever there is virtual memory on the virtual machine, it just it just goes uh, via the hot plug pass. And I'll also mention there are I mean, the page 
VMs will get data managed in, in page levels, really. And this stuff is really much uh, coarser granularity than that. So I don't think page level stuff really works well in these representations in general. So this is the page right data structure. Dave, I didn't mention page level. Maybe I, uh, can you repeat your remark, Dave? Well, I was, I was just mentioning that um, when we talk about virtual machines and physical memory. So this really is representation of what the kernel sees as physical memory. So what you were talking about here the whole time was about the guest physical space, not about the bare metal host physical space. And the problem is that the translations between the two will be broken really at the page level. And all the data structures you talked about today, you know, if we had, you know, hundreds of gigabytes of memory and every other page in that hundreds of gigabytes of space was, you know, either present or not, which the you know hypervisor could do. Um, these data structures really don't work well for that. So just saying, um, this is really representing the guest physical space. This really is not representing the host physical space in any way, shape, or form. Everything you talked about today. I hope okay. that makes sense. Okay. A question from Matthew. Local memory presents physical address in space. There is no problem with having system RAM separate from there, but failing to report your system RAM proper memory is an architecture vulnerable to mother PC resources. And Matthew, I'm not saying I system RAM is should not be reported in Procal Mem. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe I don't really understand the question. Uh, do you mean that uh, if you don't have system RAM in PROC IOMM, then uh, you could map a uh, PCI resource? Yeah, so that this this was while you were talking about um, wh whether we should be using the resource tree or whether we should have mem block uh, as a, the, the, the fundamental representation of, of how memory is laid out. Um, it, it's it's not a problem to me to think that you know we, we that, that we should have two separate trees um that the uh it, it, it does make sense to an extent to have a separate representation of things to actual memory and things which are not memory but what we do need to be careful of is that things which are represented is our memory ranges do show up in proc io mem so the architectures which aren't adding themselves aren't adding the system ram to proc io mem um are potentially buggy because our resource allocators, like if you're doing uh, PCI um, uh, uh, bar allocation, um, particularly for a root bridge, um, they need to know to not uh, overlap with system RAM. We've, we've had some fun bugs with that in the past. I'm not sure these architectures have support PCI to start with, and they might not, uh, but I think uh, the system RAM sub hierarchy added to the PROC IOMM entirely independent of the root bridge bars. And uh, I did some archaeology, it was uh, solely for purposes of KXEC so that user space could see where the system memory is uh, uh, from uh, some at some point in PROC. I think there was no CSFS at that point. So it, it was added not for purpose of proper allocation of the uh, IO resources, but uh, for purposes of uh, KXEC and visibility of uh, system RAM. Uh, uh, even not the system RAM itself, even uh, more of uh, where the first kernel before KXEC lives and what uh, memory is occupied by. I, I think that might depend on your architecture. I know that on PA risk we did add the system RAM allocation to uh, PROC IOMAM because we needed to know what address ranges were free for the uh, root bars, for, for, for the root bridges to start occupying. Uh, but uh, anyway, we are not going away from system RAM uh, sub hierarchy in the resource tree. Uh, the question is whether each architecture has to generate it itself or it can be automatically created from the information we already have in my block anyway. Oh, I'm I'm all for uh, populating that from shared code. There's there's no reason for that to be done by the architecture. And we anyway have to keep it for quite a long time because it's an ABI, right? So. Uh, 